Hey guys, it's Vincent with Vasco Toys. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a true tutorial and we're doing a vehicle tutorial. So for this video, we're actually going to be looking at an American Plastic Toys Rick Petty NASCAR in 112th scale. And before we get into that, I want to give a couple people credit for the inspiration on this. Back in March or April, I think Crashbox Customs did a video about the types of vehicles that you can purchase to customize for 112 scale. And in that video, he talked about this particular car, which he directed everyone to get on eBay. I was able to do that, and so that helped inspire me to do this. I also want to shout out the Toy Bookie because he also did a video around the same time where he customized a Scoob van. And just the, I watched like the way he did some of the spray painting and stuff, which helped uh, help me kind of get inspired to do this as well. So with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this car. Alright, so this is the final paint job on the American Plastic Toys Rick Petty car that I told you guys about. So, what I was going for here was a generic car that could be used in pretty much any setup that you would imagine a car would be in from toy photography. So, whether it's in the recently finished warehouse diorama we had, it's on the street scene, no matter who's driving, a good guy, bad guy, I thought a black car with a little bit of silver trim pretty much would be a universal use for a car. So that's why I painted it this way. So just a few things. We're going to go into the materials in a minute. We're also going to go into the step-by-step uh, -step how I did this. But before we do that, just a couple things to point out. So this car was essentially three pieces it was the the lower piece that has the wheels on it it was the body and then there's the windshield piece and the and the uh, rear windshield which is one piece so it's not that hard to take apart it's a little bit frustrating to take apart but it's not like incredibly difficult so that's kind of the first thing and then it does only come with one chair like one uh, seat which is the driver's seat. So I wanted two in case I wanted to put a passenger in there. So I actually designed and 3D printed a passenger seat and I super glued that in there. So that that's what I did there. And then another thing that uh, I don't go over in the step-by-step -step piece was the last thing I did was a lot of people were asking me, what did I do for the headlights? And the answer is much more simple than you might think. So. I literally just took some cardstock um, and I basically found pictures of headlights on Google Images, sized them down in a Microsoft Word document to what I thought would be the right fit for this, messed up a couple times, printed it out, tested it out, cut them with an X-Acto knife, and then I think I just used, I can't even remember, I think I just used adhesive spray. And I, and I pasted them on, so there's four headlight pieces on there. So it's much more simple than you might think, and I think it looks good. Let's talk materials. I'm going to show you guys everything that I used for this project. I'm not going to show it in the order for the process that I did with this, but I want to make sure you guys see all the materials I had. So the first thing is this Automotive Primer Series Filler by Duplicolor. I think I got this on Amazon. It wasn't super expensive, maybe 7 to 12 bucks. I can't exactly remember. But this is what you use after you sand down the car to make sure you fill in any imperfections that happen during the sanding process. So that's before you lay down any paint on the car. The second thing is Rust-Oleum, just regular old Rust-Oleum uh, black gloss paint, which I got at Walmart super cheap. I think it's like 3 or $4 a can. Then I also used Rust-Oleum for the silver, metallic silver, so same thing, got it at Walmart. I did end up needing to use some WD-40 because there were stickers on this car, and this just helps with the process of removing those cleanly. 
So that was a big thing for this. And then of course I used sandpaper and I did use some Tamiya model car tape that I got at Hobby Lobby and this stuff is really great. It's very easy to work with. It's basically like painter's tape or masking tape but it's specifically for model car painting so it doesn't peel off any of the paint that you've laid down already. This was the car that I purchased from eBay for this project and the first thing that I did was took it apart and honestly it was pretty stubborn to pop this out of the different plastic sockets and then I went ahead and cleaned it with some soap and water and just dried it off with paper towels when I was done. After that process was over I had to remove the sticker residue so I used some WD-40 and wiped it off with some paper towels. And then it was time to sand this down. I ended up using 200 grit sandpaper which I think was a little bit too coarse. I needed something finer to have it have a cleaner finish but I was okay with the way that this ended up turning out. The next step was to prime this for paint so I did uh, just use some spray prime on this and made sure that I did it outside with a mask on to be as safe as possible. Then of course I had to lay the base coat which was our black Rust-Oleum spray paint so I tried to get as good a coverage as I possibly could with that spray paint. And I wanted to do a silver trim on the car so I had to tape my trim lines before applying that spray paint and of course then apply the spray paint to make sure that that trim took effect. Here you can see after I removed the tape there were a couple of little spots that needed touching up but overall I had the look that I was going for and was happy with the way the project turned out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our first ever tutorial of an American Plastic Toys Rick Petty NASCAR. This is something that we're going to try to do a little bit more on this channel, some tutorials of props, vehicles, smaller diorama pieces. So if you want to go ahead and leave us a comment, let us know what kinds of tutorials you'd like to see. We'll definitely consider those for the future. Other than that, please subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Vasco Toys. We'll see you guys in the next video.